Anthony Oregonian. Joe is a different scheme and an offense last year, but these guys were more disruptive against Oregon than anybody uh, on a per play basis uh, with seven tackles for loss on just 54 offensive plays. Um, what have you seen uh, in looking back at that and other than not having to block two hill uh, who's no longer there, uh, uh, what makes you uh, more confident that you'll be able to uh, avoid those negative plays that can be drive killers when, uh, when plays are at such a premium against this team? Yeah. 50, 52 was a terror last year off the edge. He had, he had an excellent game and, and played very well. And, um, you know, the, those, those are things that we we've addressed and kind of talked about that you got to stay ahead of the sticks, you know, and get out of, uh, or stay out of you know third third and long situations, as you mentioned the, the 54 plays. You know you know Stanford's a you know ball control style offense, so you're you're going to get limited opportunities. But yeah yeah certainly you know at the point of attack, you know at the line of scrimmage we got to do a great job. You know they're very you're big and physical up front. You know a couple 300 pounders uh, play the run very well. Do a great job with their hands. You know you know want to keep the ball inside the core. So yeah we we got to do everything we can to stay out of those third and long situations. Ryan Thorber on the register guard. Joe, when you have a, a new quarterback and an entirely new offensive line, and I, obviously you're new as well, so that probably helps, but how concerned are you with just the continuity of a game one and trying to avoid uh, you know, procedure calls and things like that with a new group? Yeah, we want to do everything that we can from a preparation standpoint you know, to minimize those um, you know, pre-snap, uh, you know, penalties or any anything throughout the course of a drive that can, that can knock you back. So uh, that's been a uh, point of emphasis throughout camp and certainly now into Stanford, uh, you know, game week preparation that we got to play well uh, as a unit. We got to be very cohesive. You know, you have to be great at communication and, and don't do anything that's going to be, uh, you know, affect us, you know, adversely just before the ball is even snapped. Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. No, you're not going to tip your hand to who's going to start at quarterback, but can I ask you to just evaluate the fall camp both Tyler and Anthony had and then kind of what strengths and weaknesses stood out from this camp for both? No, I think those guys have both done a nice job kind of digesting uh, the offense and the meeting room and then taking that information to the field and applying it. And, um, you know, for not just those guys, but the entire, uh, you know, position group, we want to maximize explosive plays while minimizing, uh, you know, turnovers. And we want to be able to, you know, throw the ball and run the ball with equal effectiveness. You have to be able to push the ball down the field, but at the same time, we want to be uh, aggressive but not reckless with our decision making. Um, and then we got to be able to affect the game with our feet, whether it's by design or improvisation. You know, whether it's a, a called run where the quarterback reads it and runs, or it's something where a play breaks down and these guys all have good feet. And uh, you know, so that's kind of where we've been throughout camp with the position. Tyson Alger, the Athletic. My, my question is slightly related to that, but in the, in the past, you've talked about the flexibility of your offense and how if you have a year where it's, you know, you, you can go pass heavy one year, throw 5,000 yards at four and once, or you can adapt it to a more run heavy offense. Um, just just through four, four weeks of camp and coming into week one, do you have a feel for like where the strength of this offense is going to be? Yeah, I think we'll be able to be balanced, and, and, and that's very exciting. Um, obviously, it starts up front, you know, with the offensive line, and, you know, we go as they go. Otherwise, it's seven on seven or flag football, but an, an unbelievable stable of running backs with with great depth. You know, very versatile. You know, receivers. A lot of guys who have played uh, winning football at the receiver position, and you know, a bunch of talented guys at the quarterback spot. So uh, I think when you have to lean too heavily on one side or the other, um, you know, out of necessity, I don't think you're necessarily as um, versatile as you, as you would like to be, but I think we're an offense right now that we're going to be able to, you know, hopefully run it with run it and throw it with equal effectiveness. AJ Jacobs and rivals. Coach, I was wondering with the two quarterbacks you're looking at, um, are the packages the same for both of them, regardless of who's in, or do you have slightly different variations on your play calling, depending on which quarterback might be in? No, we feel both of those guys, th th there wouldn't be a situation where one goes in and we've got to alter what we're doing. I think both of them, you know, obviously Anthony's got a lot of experience and has played in one games at this level. So, you know, that's the one thing where he's done a little bit more. You know, Tyler's, you know, served some time as, as an understudy, but they're, they're both very, very smart players. Uh, they're guys that, that think football at a very high level. And like I said, both guys who can throw it and run it with equal effectiveness. So there, there wouldn't be a change based on who's in the game. And if there was Matt one, I probably, probably wouldn't tip my hat anyway. Sorry, Coach. Matt Prem, 247 Sports. 
Yeah, Joe, there's a lot of excitement, I think, from outside the program about this offense. Your players have said the same thing. Um, for you, what just what excites you about this team this year on offense? I think the, the biggest thing that excites me about the, the offense and the team overall, as I mentioned before, is, is the culture, the kids' willingness and their, their uh, energy and their enthusiasm when you take the practice field, you know, their attention to detail, how hard they play and how cohesive they are as, as a unit. But uh, I, I think um, – you know, going back to a previous question, the thing that excites me most outside the talent and, and the culture is the balance and our ability to, uh, you know, run it and throw it with equal effectiveness. And I think when you're able to do that, it's able to, you're able to keep the defense a little bit off balance and, you know, make you ultimately more productive. Bill Breaker, KWVA. Uh, two questions. First, I don't want to read into this too much, but Coach Master, I think I said last week, said two and a half running backs. You had four listed on the organizational chart. Can't remember the last time it was primarily three last year. And second, the decision to not be in the booth and on the field, is that something you did at Penn State? Because last year, the offensive coordinator was in the booth. Right. What, what was the first, what was, that sounded like more of a statement, the first one. What was the question for the first one? Uh, the decision to have four oh, running backs. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I think you, you're, you're, uh, you want to just make sure you're doing what you can to maximize the talent at the position. And, uh, you know, we, I mean, it may, it may go deeper than four. And uh, I think coach master does a great job with the room, understanding what the strengths and weaknesses of each guy are and putting them game, put them, putting them in a position during the game and practice to be successful. So I think that's a luxury, you know, and uh, when you have that many guys that, that are capable and certainly headlined by, by CJ, who's very, very exciting and explosive, but, there's a bunch of guys that, 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 at that position who bring unique skill sets. And I think uh, Coach does a great job of kind of identifying what they are and ta tailoring them to the situation. Um, and the second one was what again? I'm sorry. The decision to be on the field and not on the booth. Oh, yeah. Um, I, throughout the early part of my career, I had called it to uh, from the booth. And I have experience doing that. Um, when I went to Fordham as the head coach and the play caller, I didn't have a, a choice. <laughs> So I had had to call it from the field and actually was was pleasantly surprised uh, with what you can see down there and how you can get it called. If you have someone up in the booth that you trust to communicate information to you. And I also think there's a certain part of the uh, motivational aspect of it, of being the look, the entire unit of the offense and the quarterback in the eye and communicate to them. So, uh, you know, that went into our decision. One that I've done it, have had a fair amount of success doing it and that we trust the guys who are going up in the booth uh, to provide very detailed and accurate information. Jerry Thompson, Ducks Illustrated. Yes. Um, Coach Cristobal said yesterday that he had nine championship level offensive linemen. In the past, the Ducks have usually displayed the uh, reserves and mop up time. Do you think this year, because of that depth, that uh, there might be more rotation in the offensive line? I think it's a possibility in uh, any time you're replacing five starters and, and um, you know, the guys who are going in have had varying uh, levels of participation relative to this level. You're trying to find the right mix. So I think that's the biggest thing right now that between Coach Cristobal and Coach Mirabal, those guys are, are coached at a very, very high level. We do a great job of practice mixing and matching, you know, either positions, cross training guys or having entire units go in there. So I think, uh, you know, there are, are a, a significant significant number of guys that, that could go in there and play at, at, at a winning level. Now it's just a matter of uh, finding what that, uh, you know, what that best uh, kind of best five looks like. James Krapia. Joe, I preface this only slightly by saying I loathe player comps. I think it's really unfair to players to do, but you coach Saquon and he put up the thousand yards and over 300 or 400 yards receiving. CJ did that as well, uh, and we really haven't asked you very much about him, which is probably more commentary on us. Do you see any comparison at all between the elite player you had at Penn State and what CJ is capable of? Because Jim has raved about him. Obviously, you've spoken highly of him. Do you see any comparisons there? No, he, he, he's, he's, incredibly, he's incredibly explosive. Uh, you know, Saquon was kind of a, a unique guy, as everybody knows, just from a from a, a skill set perspective. But uh, I think CJ kind of reminds me of a combination. He has he has he has some Colin Hill in him, and he also has some Chase Edmonds in him. If that makes sense, you know that he's a very sturdily built guy. And when you watch Colin run between the tackles, 
with CJ, you know, they, 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 they bounce off of people and they, they don't get brought down to the ground very easily, you know, very low center of gravity, very powerfully built and are able to run through half a man or run through arm tackles. And you go back to kind of the things that, that Chase did. He was very shifty, very elusive, can make people miss in space. You know, so I, I see of the backs, I mean, you know, Kyle will be a draft pick, Saquon, uh, you know, Chase, Jordan Tobin before him at UConn. You know, we've had a lot of backs that have gone on to the next level and been very successful. And, you know, CJ certainly is uh, going to do that as well. Warren Williamson, Oregon Duck Football News. Joe, I asked Andy this question. I, w I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Just as a, as a mentor and a coach and even a dad, how important is it to you today to talk to your student athletes about voting, about that process, about being part of that process? Yeah, I, I think I haven't had to say a word about it. Uh, Coach Chris Ball has done a, done a phenomenal job addressing the team over and over and over again about the importance of this day, you know, as it pertains to uh, the young men individually and the, the overall kind of fabric of the, of the state and the country. So that, that hasn't been something I've had to address uh, with the guys because Coach has done an unbelievable job with it. Aaron Heisen, KWVA. Yeah, Joe, with so many notable receiving options this season, I just want to focus on Micah Pittman going into the season. How have you seen him grow throughout camp, and what will that translate into his role on the field? Who, who are those jerseys in the background behind you? Oh, I'm a Chargers fan. Oh, there That's you go. Derwin James and Joey Bosa. Nice. Uh, yeah, my, Mike is a guy that loves the sport of football. Uh, you see that he plays with an incredible amount of passion and excitement, and I think that's one of the best things about him is he, he loves – he doesn't love just game day. He, he loves he loves to practice, and he's a guy that's got a lot of versatility. You know, he's worked at the outside receiver position and in the slot. You know, uh, great fundamentals and technique, good short distance quickness, excellent hands. Uh, so, so Mike is a guy you enjoy coaching because he enjoys not just to play, he enjoys to practice as well. Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. Just with Stanford, when you put him on film, what pops out? What jumps out when you're watching that defense? I'd say uh, size and physicality of the front seven. Uh, I'd say length on the, on the back end. Um, you know, very well coached, uh, play with incredible effort. And, uh, you know, a team that really tries to, you know, you know minimize explosive plays. And you, you kind of look at the, the whole season. There were some games where, I mean, I think the four games in our breakdown, Stanford was the only one that scored over 24 points. I think everyone else was 24 or less. Uh, so uh, Coach Thompson does a good job with that unit. You could see the kids, you know, believe in their scheme and play with a lot of confidence and a, a lot of uh, physicality. So I think those are the challenges that are presented to us this week. We have time for two more. A.J. Jacobs and Rivals. Which it sounds like true freshman wide receiver Chris Hudson has put himself in position to to help you out this season. Talk about what you've seen from him on the field and what uh, what his skill set's like. Yeah, Coach McClendon has done a great job. Anytime you could get a true freshman, you know, ready to go in a short amount of time who hasn't been exposed to the offense, I think that's a, you know, credit to Coach and what he's doing in the meeting room. Um, Chris is very, very fast. He's got excellent straight line speed. Uh, he could get behind people. He could blow the top off the coverage. He, he kind of reminds me of Micah a little bit in the sense that he's a guy that enjoys, you know, playing the game of football, you know, whether it be practice or a game. I uh, had a huge, uh, you know, long touchdown catch in our in our last, uh, you know, kind of, you know, uh, you know, team related, you know, I don't call it scrimmage, but practice. But uh, yeah, he's a guy with, with a ton of upside and uh, you just got to keep bringing him along. And finally, James Kripia, the Oregonian. Joe, we've spoken about the depth of running back. Uh, Jim was leaving the possibility open to uh, just employing a few different things, maybe even a little bit of a fullback look. I know you're base 11 and base 12 for the most part. They ran a little bit of 2021 20, last year, but especially against these guys, do you see the possibility for more 2021, 20, 22 personnel at times? Heck, when I was at, when I was at, at different places, uh, we, we've done different things. I mean, when I was at UConn, we were, we were, you know, 50% 11, and then the rest was 21, 12, and, and 22. And, uh, you know, not to obviously tip our hand or talk about what we're going to do in the game, but I, I will say this. We, we do have the flexibility to, uh, you know, be one back, be two back. Uh, I, I don't know necessarily about true fullback, but, you know, with that tight end, you know, if you, you align him off the ball, you know, kind of in that, in that wing position, you know, that's kind of, you know, analogous to almost a fullback position, I guess, in some ways. But, uh, yeah, we can – I think we have, because of our personnel, the flexibility to line up in one or two back. But, you know, that's to be determined based on, you know, 
particular week and what we want to do. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate your time. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Everyone have a great day. Have a good day. You too.